Well, hey, everyone, and welcome to this weekend's message here at Sunny Hills Church. Super glad that you're you tuned in today. I've been really sick this week. I have to let you know. Started off about last Saturday, just a little earache, and then Sunday, maybe a little bit of sore throat. And by Tuesday, I was at the doctor's office getting a bunch of meds, but uh, back to about 90% now. And of course, a lot of you all operate in a lot less efficiency than that. And so thank you all for being here and for praying for me. And I hope you have a good weekend this weekend. You know, these messages are uh, an encouragement to you to put into faith, to put into practice your Christian faith. And today I want to cover the subject of radical living. What does being a radical Christian look like? We're going to look at Romans chapter 12, verses 16 through 20, 21. I mean, Jesus died on a cross. That's a pretty radical thing to do. Very different, uh, very much out of the mainstream. So does that mean that we live out of the mainstream? I think you're going to find this message very interesting today. Can you pick out the radical on the screen? Let's go from the top left clockwise. Uh, this lady on the top left is wearing a love mask, a uh, love piece, and it's a rainbow mask. It's probably a LGBTQ supporter, someone who just wants to love people uh, with that lifestyle. And uh, some people would consider that very radical. Uh, on the top right, uh, this is a uh, Donald Trump 2024 shirt. You know, he was the 45th president, and they're hoping that he'll be the 47th pre president with Joe Biden in the middle. And of course, some people would consider that crazy and radical to imagine that. The guy on the bottom right it's, uh, looks like a, a protester for racial justice. It's got that fist raised in the air, and some people would really resonate with that and think, yeah, you go, man. And others would just shake their head and wonder what's really going on. And then you have that guy on the bottom left. Is it possible to live a Christian faith uh, just in your ordinary walkabout day and be radical doing it? Well, that's what I try to do. And let me try to help you understand how to do that. We're going to look at Romans chapter 12, verses 16 through 21 today to try to figure out this cross lifestyle looks like. Okay, if you're going to live radically, <laughs> the first thing to do is to blend in. Now, I know that seems kind of contrary to what you think of a radical. You think of a radical out there in front, you know, getting a lot of attention and so forth. But actually what the Bible talks about in Romans 12 is to live in harmony with one another and don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. Don't think you know it all. One of the things about some radicals is, you know, their issue, whatever it is, it consumes them and they know all about that issue, but with other things, they're not that, they're not that great. And so uh, this Bible verse teaches us a few things. First of all, just be with people. I mean, that's one thing that Jesus did, which was kind of radical in his day. I suppose the religious leader of that time maybe hung out at the temple or at the synagogues, at their study halls. But Jesus, the rabbi, the teacher, was out there amongst the crowds. And he wasn't trying to cause a ruckus everywhere he went. Now, there were times, of course, he had to speak up and maybe do something which caught a bunch of flack. But that wasn't his intent. He just wanted to be, be out there and be with people. And they were ordinary people. Don't be so proud that you can't enjoy the company of ordinary people. You might think of a radical as someone who's extraordinary, goes beyond what normal people do. But as Paul discusses here in Romans 12, what the Christian life looks like living under the cross, he says it's harmonious. You just kind of blend in and you hang out with people. You're not too proud and you're just enjoying life as you go. Uh, some of you may have crossed yourself off as a radical for Jesus because you don't see yourself as a public speaker or you don't see yourself organizing some big event. And one thing I really want to drive home to you today is that you can be a radical disciple of Jesus 
um, in your ordinary walkabout life, just fitting in with people, encouraging them, being the presence of Jesus in the lives of others is so critically important. And don't be haughty or proud about it. Don't think that you know it all. As you go through life, it's important to be a lifelong learner. And one of the things that Jesus was really good at was having conversations. You know, Jesus didn't do so much telling as he did listening and having conversations with people. And one way that we can be radical in today's world where everyone's trying to sell you something, everyone's trying to push something on you, is to maybe just listen and to be open uh, to other people's conversations and to see where those conversations lead. So the first thing, and I know it, maybe it catches you by surprise, but if you're going to be a radical, if you're going to be out there for Jesus, then you can do that by simply blending in, being with people, enjoying the company of ordinary people. You know, you can you can enjoy uh, coffee with some friends at a Starbucks, or you can go fishing with a buddy on the lake. And as you listen, as you have conversations, as you let the Jesus in you spill over into their life, that's pretty radical. And I encourage you to blend in for Jesus. doesn't mean that you're never noticed, though. It's not that you become invisible, but it's what they notice about you that's different. They don't notice that you're loud. They don't notice that you have a strong opinion. They don't notice that you're out there trying to sell something. They notice that you're honorable. And that is really a key ingredient to living a faithfully radical life is focusing on honor. Romans 12, 17 and 18 says, Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see that you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. And so you, you blend in, yes, but you're also noticed. And what you're noticed for is being Honorable. The Greek word for that is kalos, uh, like you might be at a beauty contest or watching like Miss Universe on TV. Oh, that woman is kalos. She's beautiful. You might uh, see, be going down the street and there's a, a young mother with her baby and the baby is just so beautiful. That baby is kalos. Uh, so kalos means to be outwardly beautiful, to be physically attractive, or just to be noticeable for something good. That everyone can see that you are beautiful outwardly, but it means more than that. The word kalos also means to have a superior quality. In other words, the inside, what's on the inside, is so good, then the outside is what becomes beautiful. From the inside out. Jesus spoke many times about it's not that what goes into a person that defiles him, but what comes out, what's on the inside and and expresses out through your words is so very important. So to be honorable means to be to be a person of character and integrity so that it's attractive to other people. Now, a radical, you might think of a radical as someone who pushes people away. They're angry. Their fists are in the air. And that's not what being chaos is at all. See that everyone can see that you are outwardly beautiful, that you have a superior quality. And that means a couple things from this verse. It means that you don't participate in any kind of evil. Never pay back evil with more evil. All right. So uh, you see some evil and you think, oh, I know, I know it. I'll just pay back. It's payback time. And you give evil for evil. No, no. So. One way to be beautiful is just don't start or even finish a fight. Uh, boy, on Facebook nowadays, uh, people are throwing charges and accusations back and forth. We have these Facebook fights, all this drama going on. Um, and just uh, don't, don't fight. You can have conversations. You can have dialogue. Uh, but if someone wants to pick a fight with you, hey, it's okay to say, you know, I'm just not into that. I'm not going to participate in that. There's a difference between finishing a fight. There's a difference between finishing a fight and diffusing an issue. So it's like uh, you might think to yourself, okay, you started this fight, but I'm going to finish it. 
That's kind of the wrong attitude. That's evil for evil. Instead, you started this fight. Now let's see how we can come to a resolution. How can we solve this? So you work to a better end. Someone who's chaos isn't looking for the last swing or the last punch, but wants to affirm people to the very end. Stay away from the edges of evil. I've got this little dog in my house, uh, household, uh, Dudley. It's Cole's dog that we're taking care of, and he's got a broken back, and he walks kind of funny. And sometimes he trips and falls. He can't help himself. It's just dar He's a darling dog. We love him. And when we take him walking at the campground up the road, there's four little bridges over a creek that we have to go over. And um, he, he loves to walk on the very edge of the bridge. And there's not, I mean, there's no railing. There's no side to it. Just drops right off in the creek. And for some reason, he likes to walk, walk just on the edge of danger. I don't even know why he does it or even if he knows that he's doing it. It'd be much safer if he walked in the middle. And sometimes with the leash, we'll guide him over to the middle. Sure enough, you let the leash out and over to the edge. He goes again. Some people live their life like that. They're just on the edge of evil. They're not jumping headlong into the creek. But if they fell in, you know, it'd be kind of all right with them. I just want to encourage you, don't play around with evil. Don't dawdle with evil. Don't uh, experiment with evil. Uh, it makes you ugly. It makes you unattractive. That's not chaos. So don't participate in evil of any kind. And then, obviously, if something is clearly evil just abandon it maybe you're involved i don't know with internet pornography or maybe you're struggling with an addiction maybe there's uh, some part of your thought life which is sour and untoward towards others and i uh, just obviously abandon those things I, I know there's people that will be in church sun sunday and they're there with a bright happy christian face on but they've got a a secret side and it's not a great side it's an evil side and they're not chaos so if you're uh, participating in any kind of evil let go of it don't start or finish fights stay away from the edges and then abandon run away from things that are obviously evil then he says do what you can to live in peace isn't that what the bible verse said do all that you can in verse 18 to live in peace with everyone a uh, great way to do that is to watch what you say. Ephesians 4.29 is just a super verse. Man, if you just put half of this verse into practice every day, how much more beautiful you would be, how much more chaos. Do not use harmful words, but only helpful words, the kind that build up and provide what is needed, so that what you say will do good to those who hear you. Uh, one thing that a radical believer does, a radical cross-following, disciple-loving believer does is he speaks the truth but it's 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 good news it lifts people up it encourages find ways to build people up and uh, don't run people down don't turn them away but uh, invite conversations and point out the beauty of Jesus and you'll find that you'll have much more success being radical if you speak lovingly to people. I mean, guys, this isn't rocket science. Maybe you thought that being a radical, you had to sell all your stuff and you moved to a cave or you had to, I don't know, get on a, a bridge and hold a big sign or something. Uh, how about hang out with some friends, show them who Jesus is, encourage them, be kind to them, don't pick fights. Uh, that's pretty radical to be an ordinary, loving, kind Christ following believer. It's kind of a rarity in today's world. Then finally, what the Bible says here is don't step in front of God's leadership. Yes, radicals are sometimes leading the charge, maybe that at the front of a cause, but never get in front of God. There's been plenty of radicals through the years that went too far. They went beyond God's call in their lives and they got themselves in trouble. And so it's important to keep yourself uh Maybe in front of the curve, but always in step with the Lord. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scripture says, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. 
sometimes we get excited about our cause or what we're fighting for, and we think it's payback time. You know, it's, it's revenge time. Uh, it's not the case with a believer. Uh, there are some things that we just leave to the Lord and we say, God, that's your business. You handle that. And revenge is certainly one of those things. So don't get out in front of God, whether it's revenge or something else. Always stay in step with the Lord. What else does he say? There is an alternative to revenge, you know. Instead, if your enemy, your enemy now is hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will be heaping burning coals of shame on their heads. Paul is there quoting from the Old Testament, Proverbs 25, 21, and 22. What a great uh, way to be radical. Instead of paying back evil for evil, instead of taking revenge, uh, offer your enemies something good. Be kind to them. Love them. And uh, you may find that that has an effect, which is surprising to both you and them. You'd be obeying the Lord, and then they would recognize their shame before the Lord. So once again, you don't step out in front of the Lord, but you do what Jesus did, which was to serve, to help, to minister, to be kind. Um, and to, with his enemies even, yes, he spoke boldly at times, but even on the cross, he allowed himself to be pinned there to die for our sins. And so, uh, man, it's just important to be sensitive uh, to how we treat our enemies. You know how you treat your friends? Uh, you can treat your friends. That's not too hard to be kind to them, to hang out with your buddies, uh, you know, on the lake and doing some fishing and telling some great stories, having a good day. But when you're with your enemies, uh, that's when your real radical nature has to come to the front. What's radical is you're kind, you're genuine, you're good to them instead of what they might expect, which is being, being harsh. And don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil. How? <laughs> Do you know anyone that's evil? Uh, do you have an enemy that's always trying to get at you? Uh, do good to them. I know it's maybe frustrating at times, and you wonder if it's, is it really going to work? Um, doing good is a discipline of a radical lifestyle. And we don't do good for the results. We do good because it's the right thing to do. It keeps us in harmony with God when we're doing good. We kind of let other people live their life how they want, but I'm going to do good. That's radical thinking, and that's the kind of thinking I have in mind for you today. Here's the main point. Pretty simple. A radical faith is lived in the ordinary day-to-day -day life of a believer who is determined to live honorably, beautifully, with a good inside character, to live honorably in step with God's leadership. Let's look at the closing prayer for today. Pretty short. Uh, let me read the prayer first, and then we'll bow our heads. Dear God, help us to move through our lives as an honorable Christian who promotes peace and builds people up. Gosh, we need more of that. You lead God, and we will follow your every step in Jesus' name. Hey, let's close the service in prayer today. Dear God, help us to move through our lives as an honorable Christian who promotes peace and builds people up. You lead, God, and we will follow your every step. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, pray for Kim and I. This week we are going to be heading out Thursday with some wildlife kids up to Camp Rockbridge. And then uh, in a couple weeks, we've got uh, some fun things going on at church. On August 8th is our pool party, the 15th church membership class. August 22nd, our church picnic and baptism service. It's a lot of great things coming up. You can always call the church office if you have any questions. And we love you. You'll have a great week.